Okay, and then uh, let me just ask you some questions. First, mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you about wrestling. How detailed is his section on wrestling? Well, <laughs> let me say, I actually have, I've put together, by the way, a folder of, of images and copies of the treatises and stuff, which, um, I don't, I, are you going to like put pictures into the video? Yeah, I can do that if you okay. wish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we can do that. And also, um, I, I've put a, I created a page on my website for the people watching this, where I will put the pictures and the you know, PDFs of the manuscripts and things. So anyone who wants yeah. to go and find them can just go, go there. Sure. Um, it's at guywindsor.net forward slash Raz, R-A-Z. Okay. If you send yeah. me, I will put the link in the description yeah, 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 as well. Sure. Okay. Oh. So he starts, oh, can you, you can't see a thing. He starts with four unarmed guards. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then there are 20 plays and The, the last the last four of which are done with a short stick right so these four are all done with a short stick called a baston cello and the last two are done against dagger attacks so using the baston cello against the dagger so after the 16 plays of purely unarmed then here's how you hurt people with a short stick those two plays and then the two plays after that are okay and if they have a dagger use the stick like this right? right and actually on on both of them the master holding the short stick is sitting on a bench <laughs> this is really cool okay cool, yeah. um and then it gets into the dagger material and this is this is a fairly sort of standard through the book it tends to be so if i if we skip past the millions and millions and millions of dagger plays what 76 dagger plays um you then get plays of the dagger defending against a, a sword. Yep. And then you get plays of the sword in the scabbard defending against the dagger, right? And then you get sword against sword. So sword these, scabbard is, looks, uh, a guy uh, works like a baton or like a stick, right? Um, well, hang on, I'll grab a sword in the scabbard and show you. So, so basically, you're you're walking around town with a sword and a scabbard, as you do, um, and somebody grabs your jacket or whatever and is going to stab you from above. You drop the scabbard onto their elbow, use that to control the weapon while you get some distance, pull the weapon out and stick it in. Interesting. Okay. So that's one. Another is um, if you're holding the the sword point down, yeah. then you can go up to defend against the dagger. So you're basically beating the, their wrist up, right? Then you smack them in the face with the scabbard. And then of course you go to work with the sword, right? Or if, if it's going down, you can, you can do the same kind of dropping the point over. So you're using the sword in the scabbard to control the weapon, yeah, the incoming dagger, and then out it comes. Um, I've got videos of this. I'll, I'll stick them a link to it in the. This is so fascinating. It reminds me of one of the moves in Tenshin Shoden Katori Shintorio, where he, they, you know, we used to, you know, someone attacks, you go down, use the scabbard, put it here, then you draw the sword. It's right. so fascinating. It reminds yeah, me of that. Yeah. The, the sword draw takes time. Yeah. And depending on what's going on, you may not have that time. And so you need to be able to use the sword in the scabbard to control things. Yeah. But you asked about the wrestling. Yes, yes, excuse me. It's, yeah. it's not it's not a a complete kind of wrestling system. It's only leaving outside the bastoncello techniques, it's only 16 plays. So 16 techniques. But the way it's put together is absolutely fascinating. Okay. So if you like, I can just walk you through the first six plays with an imaginary training partner so you can see what I mean. Okay, so it starts out where it's very artificial to begin with. So you're grabbed by the collar here. So your opponent's left arm is coming to your collar and their right hand is coming in sort of this way, like you're gonna punch yeah. or stab you or something. Okay, so you control both elbows, right? Yeah. So my extended left arm is catching their right elbow and yeah. my right hand is 
capturing their extended left arm. Yeah. Okay? So that's the, the position of the master. So I yes. have a crown on at this point. Okay. Then you, the second play is you break that arm. Okay? Interesting. Classic, classic, classic. And it actually shows you kind of kicking through. Whoops. So like kick, kicking through like you're going to fall backwards to break the arm. Very good. Um, but then he says, if they remove the hand from your shoulder, right, you go to the face. So instead of taking them down on their face this way, you pick up the leg and you throw them on their shoulder. Fascinating, yeah. Right? Classic. Classic. Yeah. Okay. So that's, those are the first three plays. But then what do you do if his hands are in the same place, your opponent's hands are in the same place, yeah. and they've got the other leg forward. So instead of being left foot forward, meaning that they're weak on this line, yeah, yeah, they're right foot forward, meaning that they're weak on this line. Yeah. Okay? You can't do that arm break because they've got a foot there. They yeah. do. So the feet are in the wrong place. So what you do is this hand goes past their elbow to grab the hip, this hand goes past their elbow to grab the face, and you break them off their grab, off their um, off their guard position like so, right? So you're now working in this diagonal as opposed to this one, okay? Then so that's the fourth play. So um, break the extended arm. If that's not available, go for the face. If the feet are the other way around, operate in a different direction, then. The next one is the, your opponent has come in, say foot forward as the first three plays, but they're going for a waist grab, take you off your feet. And so as that happens, your hands are basically doing the same thing, but because the elbows aren't available, because the hands, you know, the elbows are about here, right? You, you end up getting the face and the waist as before, but because their feet are the other way around, instead of taking down that way, you take them down in the same direction that you did for the third play, okay? Yeah. So it's like, what do you do if the elbows aren't available? What do you do if the other foot is forward, okay? And the sixth play, this is really cool. The sixth play is I've come in to do that grab and yeah. there's a hand coming towards my face and a hand coming towards my hip and I'm going to be twisted off my feet and nasty things are going to happen. So he says, the hand that offends the face, push the elbow up. Yeah. So whichever hand is coming to the face, you push up the elbow and you, from there you can get into various other, you know, leg breaks, throws, whatever. Yeah. So the point is that it's not just, here are six different wrestling things you could do right it is organized in a way that kind of implies a logic of okay i'm going for the elbows if i can get this elbow i'll break it if i can't get it i'll go for the face instead if i'm going for the face but the feet the other way around i can't work in this line i have to work in that line if i can't get the arms at all i will end up going just for the face and the hip and work in whichever line is available and if anything's coming towards my face, that's the elbow I need to push. Very nice. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's it's really it's really beautifully put together. It is. Okay. Now I'm not a wrestler, right? I'm I'm really not. Um, but obviously, you know, I'm familiar with Fury's wrestling plays because they're they're the foundation of the art. Okay, but he's. Um, yeah, I, I am constantly in awe of how very well thought out this whole thing was. And we have, the idea is he's probably been studying and training for like 30 or 40 years by this point, right? And you're getting that kind of distilled understanding of the art of arms yeah. kind of laid out for you on the page if you're just patient enough to find it. Yes, I mean, fascinating. What you showed as a wrestler, I can read as a grappler and wrestler, that all make sense and they work. Mm -hmm. It is not something that they don't. They do, and I say it as a grappler and wrestler. Yeah. 
fascinating. You know, that's why I was just looking and said, wow, this is really, so it really shows he knew what he was talking about. Oh, that's oh yes. Yeah. That's really. And, and the thing is also, it's not, here are these six difficult, complicated, separate and totally unrelated things. It is, you're basically, whatever you're doing, you're going, <clears throat> right? Right, controlling the elbows, going for that one. It's 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 one movement that, depending on what your opponent does, yeah, right, you'll break him this way, that way, or the other way, yeah, right. But you're only having to really consider one kind of movement and one sort of so sort of your your first target is the elbows. If they're not there, you're going for face and hip. Right, it's it's simple. It is, and this is this is the great thing. The working out all of the different techniques can give the impression that it's very complicated, right? Because it does sometimes appear to be complicated. But when you actually have absorbed all of those techniques and work through them all, and you start to see the, the thing as a whole, it's simple, really, really simple. Um, like, like we were talking about the defense of the sword against the dagger. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things you have to be able to do in a sword fight is distinguish between cut and thrust because the forces are different, how you treat them are different. The opportunities they present for you to defend and counter are different. Okay. So literally the first thing you do when you see a sword in the Getty manuscript, right, is you, all you have is a dagger. And if you, um, this is the wrong kind of dagger. I, I forgot to dig out my other piece of paper. It's still not quite the right kind of dagger, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so your this is artificial. This is, this is a again. This is picture of the art, not picture of a sword fight. Yeah. So my opponent's coming towards me, and if they thrust, I defend against the thrust by crossing it with a vertical dagger. I'll just turn it so you can really yeah. see it better. Yeah. Right. So I'm passing back getting the sword point out of my way and then entering in, controlling the elbow, just like in the wrestling plays and point, point, point. Interesting. Right? Yeah. So sort of getting back, clearing the weapon out of the way and entering into my range. The same concept, yeah. Right. right, okay. If it's a cut, I can't do that. Because it, if I step back against the cut, if you think about it, um, with a cut, most of the force is here. Yeah. And the closer to the hands you go, the less force there is in, in the blow. Yeah. Right? Right. right? So what you do if it's a cut is you enter in. Yeah. Closing up, you know, taking the blade on the blade of the dagger, but you're not blocking it like this. It won't work. The sword will just go straight through. You're controlling it, getting in. Interesting. And then, and this is a really clever bit. Right. If it's if if he's sort of moving that way, you come in on the outside, controlling the elbow and stab, stab, stab. If he's moving that way, yeah, yeah, you enter it on the inside, wrap up the elbow, yeah, and stab, stab, stab. But what he's doing there is he's saying, okay, get a thrust, parry it like this, get in and hit. Against a cut, you have to move in against the blow, but the forces will either be going one way or the other. If the forces yeah. are going this way, do this. If the forces are going that way, do that. And you can summarize all of that by saying, control the weapon, get in close, control the elbows, and then hit them. Wow. Right? And it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's very simple, yeah. No one is suggesting that this is an adequate defense against a long sword, <laughs> right? Um, you know, you would have to be lucky to ever pull something like that off. Okay, but the point is, from a picture of the art perspective, it is to do the sword stuff, you're going to have to be able to distinguish between cut and thrust. And when the parry occurs, you have to distinguish between whether your opponent is hard or soft. Okay, yeah. so... If the sword's coming in here and I'm controlling it this way, if there's a lot of force here, so the opponent is hard, I yield, go to the outside, control the outside of the elbow, and bang, 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 right? Yeah. If I have actually controlled the weapon to the point where 
and actually moving it, the only way it's is weak, yeah. but it's soft, yeah, then I'll end up on the inside and control it up, bang, bang, bang. That's right. Yeah. I see. So it's, yeah, and, and then, then you're going to apply all of that mm. to the sword against sword. Mm. That's right. right. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It is really okay. So um, grappling, wrestling, then uh, dagger. Okay, we have also a stick uh, integrated, mm -hmm. and then he moves to sword. Correct? Yeah. Ah.